Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy Elliott. I'm here today with one of my head coaches, Sean Pollard. We're going to talk about seven ways to increase your gross. We obviously know there's two ways to make money. Number one, sell more cars. That's a given. Number two, raise your gross. This video is going to give you seven ways to increase your gross. You're going to love it. Check it out. Hey guys, it's Andy. So I'm here today with Sean Pollard. Sean's from California. I'm going to let Sean introduce himself real quick. Just so you know who Sean is, Sean is an amazing guy, one of the best closers I've met, sales people, unbelievable man, um, three kids, wife, been in the car business his entire life, and I want to give an opportunity for Sean to introduce himself to you guys, and then let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Sean Pollard, head coach here at, with Andy Elliott. I look forward to serving you at the highest level. I've been in the automotive space for 19 years before transitioning to train with Andy. I am the product here, guys. I relocated my family from Sacramento, California to Oklahoma yeah. to train and bring massive value to you all every day. You ready, Andy? Yeah, let's do it. So, guys, Sean's amazing. Just in case you ever call, maybe we're talking. You've probably been to a Master Closer Seminar. I'm sure you've met Sean. Just want to let you identify uh, the name with the face. So, guys, let's move in. We're going to talk about seven ways to increase your growth. The first thing I'm going to talk about, you may have heard it or maybe you haven't. I'm going to talk about the word being triggered, all right? Yes, it's one word, it's called triggered. So whenever a customer gives an objection, right? What happens is, obviously you've met that person, you have a relationship with them, they've seen your natural state. So as I see Sean's natural state right here, he's a great guy, he's cool, he's helping me buy a car, he's excited, he's showing me the vehicle, boom, I bust him in the mouth with an objection. Mike Tyson always says, everybody has a plan until they get in the, hit, hit in the mouth, and then what happens? You try to figure out what you're gonna do next. Being triggered means Means caught off guard, shocked, okay? And objections always get people triggered. I need you to understand this. If you want to raise your gross, you have to stop getting triggered in front of your customers when they say things that hurt your feelings that you don't want to hear. Objections are just a part of the sell, okay? Before someone can say yes or go in and buy it, unless they're a lay down, they're going to give you an objection. So when that objection comes in, don't change your state. Look at my smile, look at my eyes, look at my face. This is the same way they say, hey Andy, you know what, I don't think we're ready to buy today. Don't swallow and be like, man, you know, what's wrong? I mean, what happened? You don't like the car? Is it me? Is it the car? And all of a sudden, that great guy they met a minute ago that was amazing, just changes because he gets triggered by getting his feelings hurt, okay? So let's move on to number two. Sean, what's number two gonna be? Uh, well, number two for me is build trust. Okay. Build trust. So from the very beginning, when, you're out of, when your customer steps out of a car, you need to be on your A game. Get right in the mind mm -hmm. for the introduction, the way you introduce yourself. Now I know we're going through a lot of things right now, whether it's the handshake, the elbow bump, separation, have a big smile on your face and get to know everybody. Take the time to learn their names. Build trust. That's one of the most important words in the English language is somebody's name. And then throughout the process, as you build trust, trust is earned. You're not going to go to your customer and say, trust me. You're going to earn that trust throughout the process. That'll make negotiations easier. That'll help with the, uh, the, the pencil delivery, getting down payment. Maybe when it comes down to getting a co-signer, they trust you, they know you, they like you, they will buy from you. Yeah, that's it. And trust is a feeling, okay, guys? Remember, people make decisions, one, logically, and two, with their gut, yeah. right? Yeah. So guess what? Even if logically the deal makes sense, but I don't trust you, I don't have the feeling that I'm in the right place, yeah. and at the end of it, you're like, gosh, Andy, you know, the guy was on the right car, you know, the guy, yeah, I got to his payment, but he still didn't buy it. Bro, he didn't trust you. That's it. All right, let's go to number two. Hey guys, I see you. Listen, I appreciate you. Sorry for interrupting the video. I just wanted to tell you real quick, please do me a favor. Comment below. Let me know what you're struggling with. Let me know what you think about the video. I reply to every single one of my comments. I'm here to help you. And by the way, please like the video, subscribe, share it with a friend. Let's get back to the video. Talk about buyer and seller management. Oh, ooh, that's a good one. All right, so look, so number one, the buyer is, is, is your customer, the seller is you. You have to manage yourself before you can manage your, your customer. Your job is to control your state, control your attitude, control your energy, right? Listen, okay? 
Don't be yapping the whole time. Control yourself, all right? Physically, you're in your responsibility for yourself during the entire cell. And I see a lot of people that don't manage themselves. They just go out there and hope that they run into a car deal and that's it. And by the way, on the flip side, that would be the seller management, the buyer management would me being, if Sean is my customer, managing Sean's state to make sure that Sean has that feeling inside that he's in the right place. He's in the right dealership, right? The reason why he didn't buy across the street it wasn't because of the deal the price the whatever he didn't feel like he wanted to, to be here you know he didn't feel like that this was the right place inside it didn't say Sean you should buy you're in the right place that buyer management is created by me which is the seller I have to manage myself before I can manage him so how to increase your gross is by managing your customer's state, um, their excitement, the level of the atmosphere that they feel they're in the right place, yeah. right? That's so important. I don't think it's talked about enough. Sean, what do you got for us, number four? Number four, make the process fun. We gotta make the process fun. Every time your automotive sales pro is working with the customer, make the process fun. We have a lot of things going on. It's the 21st century. It's the 21st century yeah. sales pro. We have men and women that send us pictures every day here uh, to the Elliott Group of you know their phones with the camera on their customers during the test drive, in the showroom floor, in the finance office. The customers are used to yeah. cell phones being in their face. They're used to having fun. Get your phones out. Take some pictures with your customers. Share it on your Facebook page. Get engaged with your people. Mm -hmm. They love you. Get them to know, like, and trust you. You've built the trust without ever asking it, but by showing it. Now have some fun with them. On the test drive, we get videos that are sent in every day. Yeah. Andy and I crack up about yeah, some, some crazy videos ones. that we get. It's yeah. absolutely You guys amazing. are nuts. You're having fun. Yeah, and it, it, have fun with it. Hold more gross. By, now they trust you. You're having fun with the process. It makes it a lot easier when you go to close the sale. Yeah, and make it a different experience, all right? Easiest way to do this is it, it just, let's just envision real quick what the experience looked like across the street at your competition who's asleep at the wheel. Yeah. It was fun. junk. Monitor. So guess what happens? When you do what Sean just talked about and you make it exciting yeah. and you're going, hey guys, listen, so obviously I know that I have a Facebook group, man. These guys are awesome. I'm going to put it here and say, hey, I got my best customers in the world. They're going on a test yeah. drive. Are you guys cool with that, yeah. man? You got your new car? They feel like they're celebrities, man. Man, yeah. guess what happens? You're not like those guys that are like coffins walking around the dealership that are asleep at the wheel cross yeah. street. Yeah, don't be that guy. Number five, create, okay, and sustain interest. Okay, let me explain to you what I mean here. Number one, interest has to be created and it has to be sustained. So my goal is if whatever works best for my customer and me, I decide during the fact find qualify what's gonna work. I have to create that interest in that, in, in that customer. I find out what their interest is by asking them great questions, I get great answers, and then I decide what way I'm gonna go through the sale. I create the interest and then I have to sustain it all the way through the negotiation. How many times do you get a customer jacked up, man? They're excited, they're test driving, the vehicle they see themselves owning the car for the very first time right and this is a good thing and that feeling that roller coaster ride about them being excited guess what during the negotiations it's gone your job is to create the interest but you gotta sustain it all the way through the process if you want to hold the grows so create it and then sustain it. All right, Sean, number six, what do you got here? Number six is very important to me because it, uh, a lot of the things that we work on within you know, my family, with Andy, is listening more than you speak. Okay, a lot of the times we get excited and we want to make conversations about ourselves, but you have to take something into consideration. Majority of us, and ask yourself this question, how often are you truly listened to? When it comes to your family, your kids, your coaches at work, how often are you truly listened to? So when you get the opportunity and you're sitting with your customers, listen to them, listen to what they're saying and use the words that are coming out of their mouths yeah. to go back and close them with the words that they're telling you. It's very important because a lot of times in life, not very many people are listened to. And I think nope. that, that might resonate with you, resonates with me. So be the one that listens to them very closely Get them to be familiar with you, they'll buy from you, and then, then use their words to close the car deal. Yeah, yeah, people have important stuff going on inside of their head, yeah. stuff that you'll never find out about 
if you don't listen, okay? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and by the way, what Sean said is that, look, if you want someone to listen to you during a negotiation and you want to try to raise your gross, can I ask you this? Will they want to listen to you if you haven't listened to them? No. Okay. Nope. So when somebody's got something to say, listen to it. And since they'll be heard, now they're okay to hear you. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. So look, um, affect, I hope I'm spelling this right, the emotional... Is that right? State of your customer. Affected. Okay. Man, dude, this is like no spell Friday here. Okay. So listen, affect the customer's emotional state. That means this. Your customers need to be emotional. Your customers, you don't need to be emotional. I didn't say affect your emotional state. Most salespeople, they get emotionally caught up in a deal. That's the worst thing you can do. You want to kiss your gross goodbye, flush it down the toilet, get emotional during a deal, you're gone. Now, is your job to be emotional and exciting and have energy and jacked up and show them they're in the right place and have all these steps right here right to hold more gross? Yes, but your customers, your job is to get them emotional. When people get emotional, guess what they do? They spend. You know what they do? They spend freely. Okay? They spend because they're excited. We want them excited, all right? And I just want to share with you, you have to make the effect, yeah. right? Is that with an A or an E? Is that right? Gosh, dang it, man. I just can't spell that. I think that's an E. Anyways, I think this is comical. Obviously, you guys know we don't edit our videos. We're straight up. We come to give you value so you can go back and make more money, okay? But affect the emotional state of your customers. You don't get emotional. Their job is to get emotional. If you look at your customers and they're sitting here like this, uh, yeah, what are the numbers? You ain't done your job, okay? I should walk back in and the customer say, well, so have we bought it yet? Have we bought it yet? Are we good? Did they take the deal? Did they take the deal? You know what I'm saying? That's what it should be like. That's the way that this business was created on. And anybody that tells you that things have changed, they haven't. This business is changing every six months. I understand that completely. Yeah. Internet's coming in, COVID stroke in, we gotta have like ex express buying systems, like all kinds of things like have changed that make us have to do our job a little differently. Digital but this, platforms. yeah, digital platforms, but this, Never come out. You can never take out the emotional end of it. As much internet as we put into our business, I feel like that people have taken getting the customer emotional out because they think they know enough inf information that they're just here to buy. And all of a sudden, we're like, "Welcome to McDonald's. Can I take your order?" You're like a robot, man. Oh, Knock that problem. off, bro. Don't be broke. This is the era where sales pros can make two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand a year. Some of the top sales pros we make are making more money than their GMs. Listen, you can get on board, get with the training, check it out. I hope this video helps everybody. You guys met Sean Pollard. He's amazing. You guys have a great day. We appreciate you. Take care, everybody. Hey, guys, number one, thank you so much for watching the entire video. You guys are awesome. I'm grateful for you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have my training program. So I thank you, I thank you, and I thank you. Um, I got three things for you real quick. Number one, shoot me a text message. If I haven't met you, I would love to. My phone number is 918 210-0254. Shoot me a text. I'd love to meet you. Secondly, go to Facebook. Join Andy Elliott Car Sales Nation. That's Andy Elliott Car Sales Nation. One of the best Facebook groups in the world, hands down, for automotive sales training. And then lastly, I've got over 500 videos on YouTube, guys. Keep up the training. Keep watching the videos and crush it.